guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part two of How to French Polish. Well, in part one, we filled the grain of the instrument or whatever project it is you're doing. We made the rubber, mixed our shellac, etc., etc. And today we're going to carry on with that process with uh, all the grain being filled on our project. We're going to move on to what's called bodying. And bodying is basically laying down very, very thin layers of shellac on your project and it's done by applying the shellac to your project with the rubber but there's a bit of a technique to it so let's get into that and I'll show you what you need to do well we're going to start off with the bodying and what that is is laying very very thin layers of shellac onto your project. So you're gonna need your two pound cut of shellac. You're gonna need uh, your rubber that you made and you're gonna need your denatured alcohol and as well, you're going to need some mineral oil. Well, we're gonna start off on the back of the instrument simply because for visual purposes and less finicky, it's easier to show on the video. So what you're going to need is, like I said, your rubber and you want to make sure that it's good and flat. You want to put a little bit of shellac onto the rubber, just a touch. You don't need a lot, just like that. Then you want a little bit of the denatured alcohol, just a couple little drops there. And for some lubrication, we're going to use a little bit of mineral oil. And you just need a little bit on your thumb and just spread it there on the pad. And you want to start in in circular motions around your project. Now you want to pay attention to the drag. If it starts to drag on you, then you're going to need to add a little more oil for lubrication. Kind of go in patterns so that you know that you're getting the whole instrument and that you're not missing any spots. And what you're doing with each one of these circles that's overlapping, you are leaving a minuscule layer of polish or of shellac. Now guys don't be tempted to stop in the middle here because it will leave a mar in your finish. If you need a break swoop it off just like that so that you can catch your breath or what have you and then start in again. If you start feeling some drag on your pad add a little more oil if you don't see that you're adding any more shellac, then add a little more to the pad, but don't add much. Less is more. So we're gonna to continue to work this. And once we get the circular motion done, we're gonna be going in figure eights. And this is gonna help take out any swirl marks and we can go from there. Now you want to continue to work this through all over the instrument, laying down essentially hundreds of microscopic layers. You also kind of want to watch for the vapor trail and if you're getting a good vapor trail that is a good mixture of shellac to, to alcohol. It's hard to see it here but just keep working it in and then do this 
motion along with the grain to take out any swirl marks. Now, don't be tempted to start in the middle. You kind of want to swoop down, hit your instrument, and then off the tail end, just like that. And this is called bodying. And you will do this to each side of the instrument about eight times. So you're laying down a lot of minuscule layers of shellac here. So I'm gonna carry on laying on the, uh, the layers of shellac or bodying and you need to let each layer dry. So once we get this one dry, I'll show you the next step on what to do. Well, there is the first session done. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but this is the first of eight sessions and this is just the back. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to do the sides and the front of the instrument. And as well, we're going to do the neck. The neck is a maple. It's a very tight grained wood and really should not need any um, grain filling at all. So that can all be done while we're uh, going at the one side. But you wanna let this cure. So I'm gonna do this one side and the neck and then I'll let it cure and then I'll flip it over and we'll do this side and a little more on the neck. And then when that's all done, we're gonna go ahead and uh, do, of course, the front. And that is the first bodying session done on our project. So you want to let this set up for at least two hours. Even though it feels dry to the touch, let it sit for two hours and then we'll come back and do the next step. The finish has been drying for a couple hours and you can see on here there's quite a bit of residue and this residue is actually mineral oil and the next process that we need to complete is called spiriting and what you need to do for spiriting is basically you remove the oil because the next layer of finish won't stick as long as that oil is on there. So we have a clean rubber, just a smaller one, and we want to charge that with alcohol. And you don't need a ton. You can screw the lid on tight so you don't leak all over the place. And just a little bit of alcohol on there. Get it flat like we have been doing. And in that kind of airplane landing motion, just gently go over the instrument back and forth to remove the alcohol. You don't need, or sorry, to remove the oil. You don't need to do this a lot. It won't take much to remove that oil and you don't want to uh, soften or remove the finish. So just a little bit will remove the oil and get the surface ready for your next application of shellac. And that is all there is to spiriting. You can just see how gorgeous that looks. And of course that is coat one. So we have one coat of the bodying and uh, then we went into the spiriting and did that at this point to remove the oil. And now coat two, go ahead and do a second coat of the bodying. So get your other shellac pad and start applying your second coat, remembering to go in circle, a circular motion all the way around, working it, working it, working it, working it, and then getting that figure eight going, and then that, of course, that airplane motion landing and coming in to even out the finish. And when you're done, don't forget to put your rubbers into an airtight container, and that way, of course, they won't dry out for when you go to use them the next time. So we finished that first spiriting and we've got all the oil removed from the neck and from the body and we're on to the second coat of bodying or the second session if you will and I've changed rubbers here to a smaller one uh, hoping to be able to get in a little better on the detail of it 
Um, <clears throat> that's personal preference. It's up to you if that's what you want to use or not. But I found that the smaller one worked a lot better, uh, especially for a small instrument of this size. Once you finish the bodying sessions, um, after you wait that two hour period, you will notice that the oil will float to the surface. You, you'll, you'll be able to see it no problem for cleaning it off. But this is the second bodying session and I will carry on with this. And once we finish the bodying, you will have to do another spiriting and then a bodying and a spiriting and carry on with that process until you have a finish that you like. Once that is all done, there's still a little more that we need to do and I'll explain that once I finish doing all of these coats. We're just about to start um, doing the third bodying session and if you're at this point in time as I am, you're, you'll, you should start to see some good results here, but you're probably having a few issues and the issues you'll be having if you're doing a ukulele is around the bridge as well around where the fretboard contacts the body. It's, it's difficult to get in there and get the shellac applied, but it's even more troublesome to try and do the spiriting. So I'd just like to point out that although there are those that would say spiriting should be done with the grain, there is absolutely nothing wrong with going cross grain or even little circles for the spiriting to remove that oil. Um, you could always clean it up later. Another little tip too is instead of using your rubber, if you're having issues getting in by the bridge, you can take a pencil eraser. Um, a chisel one works better, but this is a square one, which will work for me. And instead of using wadding for your um, internal fill for your rubber, you just use uh, a pencil eraser and that can go into a small piece of your linen and it will get folded over, pulled tight and just like that and you'll be able to get into those tight little corners down in by your bridge and so in the areas here by your bridge you'll be able to get right in there, get in tight with the shellac and work it in as well as for the spiriting going across the grain you'll be able to get in tight to the bridge. You may just have to charge it a little more and uh, <clears throat> or more often not necessarily with more material. The other issue that you may be having is if the rubber is a little larger by dispensing shellac and dispensing alcohol from a bottle like this, you may find that you're getting too much onto your rubber and you're getting a buildup that you don't want. Remember, this is supposed to be thin, thin layers. So a little bit of an asset or a help is one of these medicine um, droppers and you can then dispense your shellac from a bottle just by picking up a dropper full, putting about 10 drops worth onto your pad and then from the alcohol as well, another 10 drops of the alcohol and away you go, therefore getting smaller layers or thinner layers onto your project and you'll, you'll get a much better finish. So let's go ahead and uh, lay on that third bodying process. We've got our <clears throat> pencil eraser in here. We're just going to pull this linen tight over our pencil eraser, just like I said. And once we're pleased with how the surface of that looks, you want a crisp corner in here. Once you get that all straightened out sort of thing, you just want to get your alcohol and your uh, shellac. And as I said, you want uh, about 10 drops of the shellac, but that's on a pad. This one here, you'll probably only need a couple. There's four. We'll start with that and see how we do. And let's do another four of the alcohol. Three, four drops of alcohol and a little bit of oil just on the end of your finger like that. And we're going to start bodying 
tight in here to the bridge. Now this hasn't been able to get a good coating in there because of the awkwardness of getting in close. But we're gonna get it with this one. So we'll just continue to work this in just as we normally would with bodying. And we'll go all the way around the bridge and the fretboard. And once we get that all worked in, uh, then we will move on with the pad and carry on as normal. So like I said, this is the third bodying session and you saw how I went at this thing with the uh, eraser with a piece of linen on it. And now I'm just going around the whole instrument. I'm using a fair bit of pressure here to rub in this finish and burnish it and blend it all in. I can feel a little bit of sticking from time to time, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of mineral oil on that. You don't need a lot, like a drop would be fine. And like I said, I'm using quite a bit of pressure and getting right down against the bridge and really working that finish in. This finish is a lot of work, guys, but well worth it. And if you're watching this video, obviously you think it's worth it too, otherwise you wouldn't be wasting your time watching it. So really work it in. I'm gonna to go to those figure eights. Figure eights, by the way, I don't know. My body sometimes doesn't wanna do figure eights. And if that's the case too, you can do large ellipticals like this. If the figure eights give you issues, and sometimes it does with me, if you want to do ellipticals, do ellipticals. Whatever you want to do here, you know. The point is learning the pressure of the pad or the rubber and the technique, and you'll be amazed at the results. I don't know if you can see that there. We're really getting a beautiful sheen, a beautiful finish. And this is only the third coat. So I'm gonna carry on with the rest of the instrument and I hope the tip with the eyedroppers and the pencil eraser helps you. And I'm gonna carry on bodying this instrument. Well, we're out here in the shop today and uh, we've got our eight coats of um, shellac onto our instrument. And what I've done is I've noticed a few imperfections in the finish on the back of it. Um, so I've taken some 1500 grit sandpaper and just sanded them using some mineral oil as lubrication uh, to take those imperfections out. And I've actually worn through the finish at one point here. <clears throat> I don't know if I can show it to you in the reflection. Uh, not really, but it's right down in this area here. You may be able to see it there just a little. Anyway, I've worn through the finish just a touch, and that's not a panic stage at this point in time, because all we're going to do is go ahead and just rub down that one area with the shellac um, on your rubber with a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of oil, and we're going to redo this corner to touch it up. The important part is that we eliminated the imperfection and uh, looking good. So we're almost done here. Um, so go ahead, sand over any imperfections with 1500 and some mineral oil and then touch up where you need to touch up and then come back and see me after that. So I've been working at it and trying to repair the blemishes on the back and it's coming along well, but it's gonna take some work. So this is what you need to do as well. Take your time, just continue adding your shellac until you get the desired coating that you want. <clears throat> I'm having a few issues on the front. Um, it has got a nice sheen to it, but it surely isn't as mirror-like as the back. And it's because I'm having issues with the bridge and the neck. 
that's okay. This video is about French polishing. It's not about how to do an instrument. But for those of you that made this ukulele or followed along or are thinking about it, the next time I'm going to do it without the bridge and the neck on. I'll do all the dry fit, then I'll apply the finish, and once the finish is complete, I'll go ahead and assemble the instrument. Hey, live and learn. This was an experiment for me too. There's one more step that's optional, that if you want to do it, and I don't think I'm going to, who knows, but there won't be a film of it, I'll just explain it. And basically, what it is, is kind of your finishing coat. And it fills in all the last little blemishes that you didn't see. And all you do is you mix a one pound cut of the shellac. And if you don't want to mix more shellac, just thin down some of the stuff you have, 50%. And you just want to load your pad. And with that airplane motion, you just want to finish it off uh, several coats to give it that last little bit of shine and that last little bit of shimmer. So that's kind of the finishing coat. So after that, I mean, you're done. You're done. So for those of you that are finishing a ukulele and are wondering here about the fretboard, for that I will be using tongue oil. So I will be rubbing in light coats of tongue oil and I'm gonna finish off that fretboard to really make the grain pop, but I don't want that slick, slippery surface on the fretboard. So let's carry on, and uh, I'm gonna see you guys when this thing is finished. Well, while we're waiting for things to dry up, um, let's talk about what it is that I've learned throughout um, this whole French polishing process. And the first thing I learned is that it's work and if you're not breaking a sweat and your arms aren't getting sore chances are you're not doing it right um, I found that a good key to getting the good finish is pressure and applying the right amount of pressure but that only comes through practice and figuring it out you're almost burnishing that shellac onto the wood and with a little bit of alcohol you're leveling out that finish and and you're making it so that everything is perfectly flat and the only way to really do that is with pressure so how much pressure it's impossible for me to give you an amount it's one of those things you need to just practice that would be the other thing that i learned is Basically, maybe I shouldn't have used the ukulele as my first attempt at French polishing. And I did say at the beginning that uh, I was no expert, but that this is the method that I was going to use. And truth be told, yeah, this is my first attempt, but it will not be my last. I can guarantee you that. I will also point out, the other thing I learned is that less is more. So... Don't go loading up your um, rubber with tons of shellac and tons of alcohol and tons of oil. It just makes a sticky build-up mess, and that helps nobody. So you really need to go with the light coating. And of course, when you have the inside wadding of your rubber charged with shellac or a shellac and alcohol mix or, or you know what have you, the more pressure you apply, that wadding is pushing that shellac mixture out of the wadding and through your linen cover onto your project in microscopically thin layers. And that's the key, thin layers. And another point is once you think that you're done, chances uh, as far as your first layer of bodying sort of thing, Bodying is hard work and it takes time. So if you go ahead with that bodying and you think, there, I'm done, chances are you're only about halfway there and you're going to want to continue on and do it even more to get those layers built up to give that really um, fine, extra gloss finish. So there you go. A few little tips I learned along the way. And uh, let's get back to this project. And there you have it. 
French polishing. Um, like I said before, the neck of this, for those who are finishing the ukulele, was done in tongue oil, and it really turned out great. I'm really pleased with the way this instrument came out uh, in the end. I mean, it looks great, it sounds great, um, so give French polishing a try. Now, how did it work out for me? Um, this video, the entire two-part series, is the method used in French polishing. It is not a video about finishing a ukulele. And as I said earlier in the video, if I had everything back, I would have done the French polish on this uh, instrument prior to attaching the bridge and the neck. It is way too hard to do that airplane swooping motion with the shellac and the denatured alcohol um, with that bridge in the way. It just really doesn't work. But this video is about French polishing. And truth be told, I ended up having to spray the shellac onto this unit to get the finish evened out. Um, it just was not cooperating with me. However, that does not mean that all the previous information is a lie, because it's not. Um, the method that I use is 100% true and will work on your flat pieces. And don't let the fact that it didn't necessarily work out for me for this particular project deter you from trying French polishing, because it sure as heck hasn't deterred me. I intend to make another instrument and I do intend to French polish it, but I intend to do it separately with the neck detached and with the bridge not in place. Um, that being said, it's still an awesome project. It's still a fantastic method to finish your projects being French polishing and don't be deterred from trying it give it a whirl. It's really worth your while. It is, uh, don't discount what French polishing can do for your flat work projects. So guys, I want to thank you for tuning in again this week and uh, I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.